Rooting your Android Power device used to be one of the only ways that you could make it do some relatively common stuff, like take a screenshot or control the LED on your camera. Luckily, today those are all built into the stock Android experience, but Root still has its place. I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now, and here are a few of my favorite Root applications that I'd like to share with you. First up is Super Sue, or Super Super User, I guess. It doesn't make much sense, but that's what it's called. This is my favorite Super User Manager. It lets you go in and uh, make changes and updates the, uh, the Super User binaries and all that fun stuff. A lot of people would overlook that. There are some other apps that you can use. Super Sue seems to be the best these days. If you've got a different opinion, of course, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you include your reasons why. Next up is an app called SoftKey Z, or SoftKey Z for our friends uh, down under. Uh, essentially, what that does is it lets you change your soft keys to pretty much whatever you want. Mine, you can see, all have a nice subtle drop shadow underneath them. It adds just an extra level of, well, refinement, I think. Uh, it might not be your thing. You might like yellow. You might like blue words. You might like circles. You might like blue circles. You might like big words. You might like uh, PlayStation. You know, whatever you like, pretty much you can set those as your buttons. You can back them up just right there with the, uh, the save. It's really easy to make changes. You just come through, select whatever you want. Of course, I'm just selecting these at random to show you what you can do, not necessarily that you would do, just like that. And then you can apply them. It does require a reboot for those changes to take effect, but once you've done that, you're good to go. Next up is SQLite Editor. Now, we talked about this in a recent article that uh, told you how to re-enable tethering on certain T-Mobile devices and certain T-Mobile plans, uh, specifically that are running Android KitKat, which for some reason turned it off. This is essentially just a SQL editor. You can go in here and add keys, add values, see what they are, change the values. What we did is we went in and we just added a, a simple tethering key and value, saved it, rebooted, and we were good to go. I've only used this half a dozen or so times to change settings, but these are settings that generally can't be changed anywhere else. There is no settings control panel to get to them, and you just might want to go in and make some changes. Some of these values you can set through, through various control panels and settings screens. A lot of them, however, you can't. So to do that, you're going to need a SQL editor, and SQLite editor works great. Gotta mention BusyBox Free. Now, a lot of your routing setups, whatnot, the, the tools that you use to root are going to include this. Mine did. Essentially, this is all of the libraries and uh, all the programs that you need to be able to run all of your rooted and super user stuff. You're not going to do a lot with this on the surface, but all of your root applications, they're going to be happy that you have it. Most cell phones get their time and date settings from the network that you're connected to. So in my case, T-Mobile. You'll notice I've got that turned off and there's a very good reason for that. There is an app I wanna show you next. It's called Clock Sync. This will work both with and without root, but it'll do a lot better with roots. So as you can notice, the atomic time says we're 17 minutes past the hour, and my system time says that we're 16 minutes past the hour. So we're off by a minute and several seconds here. Now this isn't really a big problem to be several seconds off or even a minute or two off, not a big deal. However, if I've got lots of these, so I've got two or three cell phones in my family, I've got two or three tablets in my family, and I've got two or three computers in my family, all of them have a different time. And of course, if you've got teenage kids, you know that uh, saying one time and being one minute off means for some reason that your opinion isn't valid anymore. So what we do is we go through and we synchronize all of these. Our Android powered devices, we use this app called Clock Sync. On our desktop computers and, and laptops and whatnot, we have another app. But essentially what it does, it goes out to the atomic clock, grabs the current time, looks at your system time, and then you can synchronize the two. A few settings in here. If you take a look, you can change your NTP server. That's your network time protocol, I believe is what that stands for. You can enable automatic synchronization. I've got that set for every three hours, but it's not strict. So it's not like every three hours on the hour. 
It's not a high precision mode because I'm not really that worried about down to the second. If I had that on, it would go out and look at the atomic clock five times and kind of take the, uh, take the average of those and that just helps resolve some network latency issues that you might get if one takes longer than another. You can set it to only do it over Wi-Fi so it doesn't use up any of your data. And I've got mine so that it only does this when the device is awake so that it doesn't chew up any more of my battery other than a ping back and forth to a server. So this does work both in rooted mode, which is what we're seeing right here. It also works in a, uh, a more restricted, limited way in unrooted. So even if you don't have a rooted device, this app will still, will still be beneficial to you. Next app on my list of favorite root apps is Root Explorer. Now, this is my file explorer. It's the only one that I've got on my device, and uh, to tell you the truth, I really like it. There are others that look a little bit nicer. This one does have some stuff that you can change and whatnot. I kind of like it the way it is, but what you can see here is it's just like a normal file explorer. Just very simple, very basic, but unlike those, this does let you get into some of your other folders that you can't normally get into because this lets you use your root access and you can go in and make changes inside your system and data folders as well. Very useful, very handy, especially if you're applying any patches or updates that uh, well, you didn't get through official methods or if you're making customizations to apps. Last but not least, I am running a stock version of Android. It's rooted, however, and I am running a custom kernel. In this case, it's the Faux kernel, so I've got an app called Faux Clock on here. Now, this lets me come through and set any of these settings at boot or not. I can turn them off or turn them back on. It lets me set my minimum and maximum clock, so you can see here I am underclocking my device. Got my governor set to a new one called IntelliDemand, which is kind of a cross between intelligent and on demand. I've turned off my M precision and I'm using the IntelliPlug hot plug driver, which uh, is supposed to be recommended. So, hey, great. Got some other stuff turned on as well. All of these are features of the kernel. I can do voltage adjustment, which I have not done. If you think I should be, go ahead and head over to Pocket Now. Leave a comment down in the comment section of the article. Let me know what, uh, what voltages you would recommend for me to adjust and why. That would be helpful for me and for uh, everybody else as well. CPU governor, you can come in here and turn on. This is uh, specific to the IntelliDemand CPU governor. Turn that on and off. We can look at the updates down in the bottom. That takes a minute to populate. Very cool stuff. We can look at statistics for... Uh, for CPU idle and other stats. Thermal management, I'm using the uh, IntelliThermal, which is supposed to be better than the Thermal D, which is stock. I can set my uh, frequency th throttles and whatnot, and of course, look at down here on the bottom when I have been throttled because of high temperature. In this case, I haven't been at all, probably because I am underclocking. You can also come in and uh, mess around with the GPU, change the governor, change the frequency, all that fun stuff. IO scheduler as well. Sleep to wake or sweep to wake rather. I don't have this enabled for the sweep to wake. We've showed you that in a previous video. However, notice I just turned it off. I do have tap to wake. So that feature is right there and it mimics what you can do on the, uh, the Moto X and whatnot. So really kind of cool. Does supposedly take up a little bit more battery power because it's uh, it's still got that digitizer on even when it's in your pocket. So, you know, whatever. Vibration adjustment, you can change the intensity of that vibration. I've got mine set at 70%. Memory management, yeah, just lots and lots of stuff. I'm not gonna go through everything here because, I mean, honestly, there's a lot. You can even come in and download the, uh, the newest kernel straight from here. You do have to reboot into recovery to apply those, so make sure you uh, know what there are. This one that I'm using is the uh, 008 Ultimate. So just in case you were wondering about that. Uh, you're gonna need to have a custom recovery image, which is gonna wrap up our favorite root apps. This one, not really an app, but we may as well include it. It's TWRP recovery. It's finger friendly, it's nice. It does an awful lot of stuff and I would highly recommend it for everything other than setting up a custom ROM on your device the first time. For that, I still recommend Clockwork Mod Recovery just because 
uh, that's kind of weird the way that TWRP does it. So from here you can make backups, you can make restores, mounts, wipes, pretty much all you want, including reboot. And you know, like I said, it is finger friendly. So we will go ahead and reboot into system just like that. So there was a quick look at some of the root apps that I'm running on my device right now and seem to stay on my devices regardless of which device I'm running or how many times I've wiped it and reloaded a stock or a custom ROM. But now it's your turn. I want to know what apps you use and I want to hear about that over in the comments at pocketnow.com. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure you do that. We're literally releasing new videos every day. That's the best way to keep up to date on everything that's happening in the mobile industry, now including wearables. Also, why not share this video with your friends on any one of your favorite social networks? My favorite, of course, is Twitter, where we're at PocketNow, and I'm at Joe Levi. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.